Thursday. Well, thanks for tuning in this week. If you saw my last voice lesson about belting, probably made you curious about twang. So instead of leaving the whole voice lesson like this, I'm just giving you an example of how to talk when you're talking about twang. And of course, the accent just comes in, like I'm Fran Drescher from The Nanny. I know I'm old, okay. What is twang? Twang is that brightening. It's not nasality, which people think it is. It is um, a nasal placement, yes, for sure. But um, it's dealing with kind of the vocal color and putting it in to the front of your face. And there are a lot of great exercises that I will do today that can teach you how to use twang. What are the benefits of twang? You can increase your sound up to 600%. What? And it requires less effort than, say, belting. And it requires you to use less air, which in turn means less effort. You can sustain and carry a sound without belting. Okay, so ground rules. Number one, you cannot be afraid to sound ugly. <laughs> We're going to do a lot of exercises today. Actually, all of the exercises we'll do will not sound good, will not sound pretty, not exactly what you're wanting, but I'll try to give you an example of using twang and how you can kind of lessen it and create. You know, this is this is like what we build up to. And then you can decide on your own how you adjust your sound to make it how you want it to sound. If you want it to be a little bit deeper, not as nasal, not as bright. Uh, but there are some notes that you just need to get into that placement and then you can kind of adjust the sound from there. Twang is definitely a more contemporary term that is usually associated with more contemporary singing, but if you're a classical singer, you can really add more vibrancy and brilliance or brightness to your sound by using techniques of twang. Huh! Okay, so we're gonna make some weird sounds. Just go with me. Over exaggerated twang, a really great sound to demonstrate that would be a duck. Like that. I use the term uh, dying cat a lot. Let's change it to whining cat. Oh, that's so much nicer. Think about whiny sound. Yeah, yeah. You hear a lot of teachers use nah, 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 nah. I like to just say this is kind of like that whiny cat sound. Nah, nah, nah. It's all up here in the front. So I want you to try that. Squish your face up a little bit. Think of really high tongue placement. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, 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 nah. Whiny, whiny, bright sound. Now this is pretty much the opposite of when we talk about lifting our soft palate and our head voice. That like yawny open nice whoa space. This is the opposite. So you're lowering your soft palate and raising your tongue and kind of squishing your face. Okay. Maybe uh, if you're home and there are other people there, either tell them to take a nice walk or shut your door. Thanks. Here's a good vocal exercise when we're working on twang. I want you to think of saying the word sing but then just the NG. Sing, sing, sing. Now that was all in my lower register. I'm gonna kinda go into my mix and up into my upper register. Sing, 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 sing. So you should feel it resonating. It's kinda like a buzzing. You'll feel it here and really here. Sing. Feel that? That's twang, y'all. So when can we put twang to use? A good time to use twang would be when you need to sing something that's too high to belt and it feels too thin, like your head voice. If you're struggling with uh, your upper notes and you feel like your head voice it's too breathy sounding and open, it feels really breathy, and you want to create a bigger, bolder sound, then that's a good place to bring in twang. So we're going to try scales, and you're going to do this on a nya. So N-Y-A, just think nya, 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 kind of that whiny cat thing we were doing. Nya, 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 nya. So if you feel like this is too far back, nya, 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 that's in that lifted soft palate space, too far back. Think of that squishy frontal space that you're sending it right here. Really attractive, I know. 
Last week you might have seen my music video, Hello by Adele, and I did a lot of belting in that music video. I did use twang on a few notes when I was flipping in that song, but today I'm going to raise the chorus, make it much higher, a little too high to belt, for me, comfortably. So if I wasn't using twang, and I was singing all the way up here, Hello from the other side. First of all, I feel like that sound is a little too, maybe classical, a little too straight. Square. It's also pretty thin for me. Hello from the other side, other side, other side. The more and more I push the air out, the more and more I try to give myself more volume in that space. Other side. It's just thin. Okay, so now I'm going to use twang. Here's the difference. Hello from the other side. And now I'm adding twang. Hello from Okay, now, woo! So that's not necessarily a pretty sound either, but I hope that gives you an idea of the contrast. If you could tell the difference between the two, how the second one was much louder, really cuts through. That's definitely an example of twang. Another singer that I reference a lot, Mercedes from Glee. Her character, you know, is frequently kind of that high gospel belt sound. So that's a high G. If I were to sing that, kind of just as I would sing that. So that's kind of my classical, really focused, upper soprano sound. Okay, now I'm going to move that note directly from that classical kind of long placement into twang. And you can see how it kind of creates that really whiny bright sound. But imagine over that gospel choir or that, you know, that really beefy sound that we want. That was just an example of kind of transforming. Your tongue will lift and your face will get a little squishier. So I'm going to try yeah up here. Yeah! difference. It's a much more powerful sound. Um, I believe it when you say 600% volume because it really does increase your volume. And I didn't have to do much at all. It's still, you know, really easy, healthy. It sounds pretty intense, doesn't it? <laughs> You're probably going, I don't want to learn how to do that. But honestly, if you can kind of gain this technique of just learning twang, then I promise you, you'll be able to do a lot more as a singer, especially when you're wanting to create more volume and a more powerful sound in your upper register. So thank you all for twanging with me. And if you have any other questions, please leave them below. It's hard to teach a voice lesson to just leave it out there and not get feedback. So I really want to know what's working for you, what you have questions about. Again, my overall rule that I you know, always talk about, if you do any of these exercises, if you watch any of my other voice lessons, whoa, and you feel tension or you feel tight or you feel uncomfortable, um, if things don't feel right, then something's not right. So start over, you know, try to take a really big, nice grounded breath, feel relaxed, and your breath is really what roots you. Your breath is what's creating the sound that comes out of your mouth as a singer. So breathing is key and feeling grounded. You know, even when you're singing, up here, it's all about that grounding in your body. <laughs> So thanks again for watching. I will see you guys next week for Thanksgiving. And I will be very thankful if you'll come back and watch my newest music video. All right, take care everyone. Bye.